you're building a website inside of Framer, it is so important that your website is responsive across different devices. That's why today I'm gonna to be teaching you my method on how to do this inside of Framer. I'm gonna be teaching you concepts like max and minimum width, how to use flex, how to use wrap, how to use grid, and so much more. So if you guys wanna learn, follow along down below. There's gonna be a remix link to follow along. And without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, let's go ahead and jump inside of Framer. This is the project that we're gonna be creating. Like I said, you guys can get the remix link down below if you'd like to follow along. Um, and what we're basically going to be creating is this different responsive behavior. So you see here, as I resize the window, this would be representing the different viewports that I could be using. Let's say I'm on a tablet or a mobile device. Everything here is responding to the size of my window. So that's exactly what responsive design means. It means that I've set different constraints within my file so that as I'm on different devices, I don't see any issues um, that appear as I work on different devices. So this is super important to do. You'll see here that I have different breakpoints already set up for my file. And here's some different things that we're going to be talking about today. Wrap, grids, complex stacks, using naming behavior, and min-max width as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just create another page real quick. And this is going to be where we'll actually start building some things. I'm going to bring over some of these elements just so that we can reference them and start rebuilding them on the next page. All right, so jumping inside of a new page here at Framer, Let's start reconstructing this page and I'll start layering in the different tips as we go along on how we can set this up for the best possible responsiveness. So, so let me just pull in these buttons. I'm just dragging over some of these elements real quick so that we can start reconstructing this page. So now that I have my buttons and everything, you'll notice some of these sizings are really wonky, but that's okay. Let's just keep it as it is for now. Um, so. I can take all of these, the text of my buttons, and I'm just gonna press Option Command Return, turn it into a stack, and then it got really broken here, but I just need to change the direction uh, to down. And you might notice things like this happening when you don't have a layout yet on your page, so we're gonna add that next. So I can just use the arrow keys to reposition some of these things as I like them. And I'm going to set my text to fill the container I want to make sure that it's left aligned and I'm going to do the same thing here. So filling your container just basically means that whatever the size of my parent container is, my object inside is always going to fill that width. Um, so now I can set this to be whatever size I want. You'll notice that it's filling as desired. Um, the next thing that I want to discuss is how to use wrap. So in this case right here, I've got these buttons but if for whatever reason I was on a very small display, I would want this option to be enabled. And that basically tells my stack here that as I come down to a number or a size for my width that is too small for those buttons to fit, it's gonna wrap down onto two lines. And we're gonna talk about this more here in a second. Um, so let me just clean up some of these things real quick. I'm gonna add a little bit of gap and then over here, I've got my video. So we'll drag in the video, and I wanna make sure that I have a few different things on here. So the first one being my minimum width, that basically tells Framer that when this gets to a certain size, I want something else to happen, or I want it to just stay at that size. Um, so basically it cannot get any smaller than whatever number I specify in here. So you'll notice for this video, I have a minimum width. So if you want to add that, you could just come down here and click minimum width. And I'll show you why this is important because as we take these two elements and wrap them inside of a stack, I just press option command return again to create a stack. Now I can specify exactly how big I want this to be and how small I want it to get to before it breaks down onto another line. If that's confusing, let's just show you real quick. So as I put in wrap here, you'll notice that this will scale and then as it gets to a certain number, it breaks down onto two lines. Let's set this to fixed real or to fit real quick so we can actually see that. So you'll see that I can scale it up, but then as soon as I get down 
to whatever that breakpoint number is, it goes onto two lines. And you can set this to be whatever you'd like. So in this case, I put 332. I could put 500. And now it's already on two lines. Let's scale it up. So now as I reach 500, it breaks down onto two lines. This is a very simple concept that can really help improve the layout of your website without having to fix different things on different breakpoints. I see a lot of people that have fixed elements on desktop, fixed elements on tablet, and this just makes your life so much easier because you don't need to do any guessing of what size should it be on tablet, what size should it be on mobile. It can always be whatever size you want it to be based on the actual size of the viewport. So now that we have our hero section kind of laid out the way that we want it, things are breaking down onto two different lines. I'm going to turn this entire page into a stack. So now this is basically going to allow me to add my different sections. So what you want to do is always make sure that you have your content. So I'm going to call this my hero content. And then around it, I'm going to add another stack. So that's option command return again, set this to fit my contents. And now this one is actually going to fill the width and I want it to fit my contents height. So what this allows me to do is create really nice different blocks. So if I go back to my original page real quick, you'll see that I have, if we look at my layers, I have my hero block, I have my nav block, and I have my templates block. This is really important just because it keeps everything nice and organized. I can see the different blocks that build up my web page, and it's just an easier way to organize things. So now that I have my hero block, let's go back in here. This we can just call content. This one is actually going to be our hero block. So I renamed them a little bit early, but you can see now that this is actually the content and this is just the block that holds everything together. So inside of here, the only thing that you want to do now is add a max width. So this basically allows you to decide how big you want your web page to be. So in this case, I have 16, oops, I have 1600 pixels as my width. That's pretty big, but I probably only want my content at any given point to be about 1200. So this allows me to say if someone's on a very massive display, I don't want my content to stretch all the way across the page. I want it to fit within their viewport. Okay. So now that we have our hero section kind of built out the way that we want it, our content is scaling on resize of the window. Let's start building out our next section. So for the next section, we just have some text. Oops. Let's paste this inside of here. So we just have some text and a couple different cards. So for this template section, what I want to do is create a grid. And a grid is really useful when you have cards or maybe you have testimonials. Um, just a bunch of block items can be organized really nicely using um, this technique using grids. So I've got my text here. In this instance, I want it to actually be aligned to the center. And I'm just going to pull over some of these different cards here. So you'll notice this is very massive. But if I put this inside of a stack real quick, Option Command Return again, put this inside of a stack. Um, now I can actually turn this stack into a grid. And you'll notice some of the behavior starts to change. So now that I have my grid, I can very simply just take my different component cards. I'll just copy these, paste them inside of here. And just like that, Framer knows that I'm trying to create a grid and it's given me this beautiful accessible grid without me doing anything at all. So now that I have this, I can start adding some of the things that we discussed earlier. So let's start by just taking the grid. This is going to be our content. So I'm just gonna put this inside of a stack. And for now, I want this to fill and fit my content. So this is actually the container and of course we still have some cleaning up to do but let's just create our block like i said before so i'm going to create another stack around it set it to fill and fit and now i can set my actual names for these we'll just call this template 
And in here, this is where we set the max width. So inside of this inner container in our block, I'll just change that to 1200. And now you'll see that everything's organized nicely. We're still gonna add some spacing in here, so don't worry. This is gonna get cleaned up a little bit, but I'm just showing you the different concepts of how we can organize these different things. And then once we have our grid created, I can do some customization. So let's say I want three columns or how I wanna customize the amount of rows. The gap is the space between them. So we can do about 32 here. Um, and there's some advanced options down here that might be useful as well. Auto basically allows you to just kind of set a minimum size for your different cards and they'll fill based on that. So if I want my cards to be at least 300, um, then I can set it based on that. Or let's say I want them to be at least 500. It will responsively adapt my grid based on that setting. So I think this is a much more useful way of adapting your grids because if you're using minimum and max widths, basically your grid can be whatever size that the device can handle. So it just makes things a little bit easier. So now that we have our block for templates and our block for our hero section, the only things that you want to start adding, let me just move this out of the way. The only things that we want to start adding is those actual breakpoints and make sure that everything is responding nicely. So in here real quick, let's start messing with the padding. So at the top, I probably want 80. We'll do 80 top and bottom. And on the right and left, you want to add about 24 pixels. Seems to work nicely. And this basically gives our frame um, padding when it gets down to a small number. On a bigger device, you're not going to see that padding. But as we get into the next few breakpoints, you'll start to see it. So same thing here on our hero section. I'm going to add 80, 80, and then that 24 on the right and left. And like I said, we're not seeing it yet, but as we start adding in our different breakpoints, we'll start to notice it. Here, our text is a little close to our grid. So I just want to come in here and make a little bit of an adjustment there to make sure that I have some nice breathing room between this content. And everything seems to be looking nice. Um, and like I said, if there's anything that you guys want to adjust in here, if you want these cards to be bigger, smaller, you just do that right here. Um, and you can adjust this to be whatever size your content can handle. So in this case, um, I wanted to have the six card grid. So I'll just shrink that down a little bit. All right, so now to actually start building out some more responsiveness, let's start doing our breakpoints. And then after we create our breakpoints, I'll show you guys how we can adapt our content using components, and we'll do that for our navigation. So this content here on our breakpoint isn't working, and I'll show you why in a second. So in here, we want to set our wrap to make sure that it's actually responding to our content. So here, I want this to fill the container and it should be working now. The only thing that I wanna change is this value here because basically we want this to be spaced um, nicely so that our content breaks down onto two lines, but we also want this to still fill the container. So here, I've set a max value on my text. So I wanna make sure that this container is filling. So now we have one frame for this, one frame for this, and everything seems to be filling quite nicely. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about today is the use of different breakpoints. So now that we have our breakpoints actually built out, we can adjust our content based on those breakpoints. So in here, I can come into my text and I'll just make sure that I'm using my heading style here. And I can come in here and click edit. And right here under type, you can see add breakpoints. So if I click this, everything kind of moves a little bit. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but on these different pages, my text is slightly smaller. So Framer will actually do this for you. There's nothing that you need to do, but you can also just come in here and make adjustments as needed. So. In this case, my medium is 48, my large is 60, and my small is 38. 
So that just kind of shrinks my text down nicely depending on the size of my display. Okay, so everything is responding quite nicely. Let's just do a quick test and see if our website is actually responsive as we want it to be. So in here, you'll notice I'm getting some issues with this text here. So this is likely caused by the minimum width value. So we want to make sure that if you are using wrap in some places like we are here, you're going to eventually come into this issue where some content is kind of getting squeezed and other content seems to be overtaking it. That's because when you use wrap, this has a minimum width, but this container does not. So we put the minimum width on our text, but we did not put it on our actual container. So let's make sure that we add that minimum width into our container as well. And this is a very quick, simple fix that will really help you guys when you're designing your website, because if you don't do this, you're going to need to manually adapt your content for all your different breakpoints. With wrap, it will do it for you. So let's just try this out one more time, make sure everything's working nicely. Okay. And you can adjust these values as you want. I put in kind of arbitrary numbers, but if you want your content to break at different points, you just set those minimum and max values as you like. The only other thing that I want to do on this page is just make sure it is fitting my content nicely. So now that will fit my content. And now let's start talking about the head. Okay, so looking at our navigation here, the only thing I really want to mention in here is that you can set up your breakpoints using different variants. And if you guys want to see a good example of this, I would just check out the framer one that they already have. So if you come to the insert menu, type in nav, um, you can just use the one that they have already. Um, but what's important to note is that you can actually use different naming conventions to make sure that these adapt based on your different breakpoints. So if you name your um, desktop one, if you name it desktop, then tablet and phone, what that allows you to do is if we come back here, I'll just remove the navigation real quick. If I drag it into my file and I'll just set it to fill, you'll notice that it automatically adapts for me to that specific variant. So if I'm on my mobile device down here, you'll see it has my phone automatically selected for me, tablet. Um, and this just saves you a little bit of time, especially if you have many different pages that you're working within. All right, so now in really no time at all, we were able to make our website super nice and responsive. So now our website should be working beautifully no matter what device uh, the user is using it on. And this is just super nice and helpful for our users because they don't need to see a smaller version on tablet and a smaller version on the phone. Their content is actually just being adapted no matter where they're viewing it from. And we don't need to create different breakpoints that have fixed values either. We can actually show our content how it's going to be represented best depending on the environment that someone is viewing it from. So using the techniques that I discussed today, you should be now able and confident to make your website responsive using Framer. I hope you guys found this useful and helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're excited about Framer and want to learn more, please stay tuned because Flex Academy is working on a really cool in-depth Framer course that's going to help you go from 0 to 100 in this platform. And if you guys have any specific content that you want to see inside of Framer, leave a comment and we'll be sure to make a video about it. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.